A couple of months ago, I drove the very base Cayman 2 litre and I made the very bold claim that I think it's the best car that Porsche makes. But Porsche is a company that constantly wants to improve what it does to make its best even better. But you've got to wonder how they could make something that felt so engaging, so unadulterated by the need for extra money to be spent on it, better. Well, Porsche, as always, is pretty sure that it knows how to. And its answer is to make it £60,000 more expensive. Yes, the most extreme, fastest, lariest Cayman ever is the new GT4 RS, a car designed to be the ultimate in the 718 bloodline. And I tell you what, it certainly looks the part. Yeah, meaty, isn't it? But the question is, how do you take a Porsche Cayman and add 60,000 pounds to the asking price without just adding things to it from that legendary Porsche options list? Well, let me tell you. The first thing you do is you take that efficient but let's be honest, uninspiring flat four from the standard car. You rip it out, and you chuck it away. Don't need that anymore. Let's, let's pretend it never happened. Instead, you put in a four litre flat six straight from the Porsche 911 GT3, and not just any GT3, this is derived from the one in the GT3 Cup racing car, so it should be pretty good. That means 500 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque, as opposed to 380 newton meters in the standard car or 420 in the GT4. But you will, I'm afraid, have to take my word for it because, as usual, Porsche really does not want you to know that there's an engine in there at all. So it is there, I promise. Now that lift in torque might not sound like that much, and in reality, it isn't. It's only 30 Newton meters. But the Cayman GT4S isn't really made for just going incredibly fast in a straight line. This car has broken the Cayman GT4's record around the Nürburgring, so it was meant to be fast and focused round a track. Everything is stiffer and the chassis has been designed to be more responsive. It has bespoke setups for its damping and its anti-roll bars and the springs have been stiffened up specifically for the RS, as have the shock absorbers. That means that this should be the most track-focused Cayman that there has ever been. But Porsche is very insistent that that's not all. They insist that if you want a car just for the track, you can already buy the 911 GT3. And the price difference isn't massively different. So why would they make this another track-focused car? Well, they say this is the ultimate Porsche for enjoying your time on the road. It's not just the mechanicals that have changed this, but in reality, you don't need me to tell you that because you've got eyes, you're watching a video. You really aren't gonna miss this car coming. Even if those wheels weren't gold and they'd painted the carbon fiber body color, you will see this coming a mile off and you'll hear it because it sounds incredible, but more of that later. Firstly, the first thing that you absolutely in no way can miss is that they fitted a rear wing the same size as Vladimir Putin's dining table to the rear. And it's mounted with these extraordinary swan neck mounts that you see on the 911 GT3 and that were originally first shown on the 911 RSR Le Mans racing car. Those wheels are magnesium and all the carbon pretty much comes from the Visac pack, which is an extra 9,000 pounds. They also appear to have basically thrown every single vent in their parts bin at it. I've counted at least eight and I'm pretty sure there's more. They've flared the nose and nostrils as much as they can and given it a massive splitter running along the front. And at the back, there's a big actually working diffuser that has two very nice exhausts in it. But my favorite thing, I think, about this entire car, amongst all the carbon fiber, all the vents, all the absolutely crazy things, is that they appear to have just gone down a B&Q and bought some of the cheapest chicken wire they could find to make sure that stones don't hit the radiator. Love it. To finish it all off, the GT4S is 30 millimeters lower. It has lost 35 kilograms from its already slim GT4 sister. 
That's how it manages to reach 62 miles an hour in the same 3.4 seconds as the 911 GT3, despite having significantly less power. The suspension is the same setup as a standard GT4 with McPherson struts all round, while the extra vents are largely there to help reduce pressure under the car and therefore lift. There's a redesigned floor to feed more air to the big diffuser, and it has titanium exhaust which Porsche claims look like the 935. Overall, despite that massive wing, the lifting downforce is quite modest at 10%, but if you are on a track and you find the full performance mode, that can increase to 25. The beauty of having a Cayman as the base for such an extreme car is that you already know you've got something brilliant underneath. The Cayman's wonderful that give you the feedback, the fizz, the everything you want from a proper car that you really want to go and drive. And that still comes through despite all the changes that have happened to make it a GT4 and then a GT4 RS. But this is one of those cars that does everything at 5,000 tenths. The fizz through the steering wheel feels even more pronounced now that you're going so fast as you're doing it. The way that it grips is incredible. I am yet to find any way to brake traction either front or rear with any kind of traction control on. And it's not like the traction control is a real menace. If you go over a bump, the wheels will light up a little bit. It's just the suspension and the chassis are doing so well. Even though you can't get this as a manual, if you want a manual, you'll either just have to live with your GT4 or spend that extra money to get a 911 GT3. But the PDK works perfectly in this. The changes are sensationally fast. Up or down just sounds incredible with that motor behind you. And one of the other alterations they've made with that is the new air intake behind us. Now that is partly making sure that that massive engine receives more air faster, but in reality it's mostly so that it sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> it is, quite frankly, one of the best sounds I have ever heard in any car with any engine of any kind. And it revs to 9,000 RPM. You get to keep hearing it until a rev line that you're very unlikely to reach. And it gets harsher and harsher and more incredible the closer you get to that red line. I don't think I've ever heard anything in a car quite like that. It really howls and barks. And the throttle response to go with it is excellent. You have no modes in this car. You can't have Sport or Sport Plus. You've just got options for the suspension and damping, the PDK Sport, this particular one, and your exhaust. Oh, and your traction control. Obviously, you're always gonna keep the exhaust in noise and you want to keep that gearbox in its sportiest mode. But actually, the sport, the harder mode for the dampers is too much on any road. And if this car is meant to be for the roads, just keep it in its standard setting, because those dampers are excellent. They're the ones that self-tune themselves to the corners, and their response is brilliant. You can feel that it is more stiffly sprung as it hits the bump. But then the damping is so good. Those dampers just soak everything away. Nothing gets sent through your bum, despite the fact that I'm on a pretty firm racing seat. Oh, you're gonna have to go a long way to find something better, even for the 108,000 pounds that this car is. The interior is pure Cayman, but with a few changes. Those five-point harnesses are standard, as are the incredible lightweight bucket seats, which look at first like some kind of torture device, but turn out to be supremely comfortable. This also isn't one of those 1990s stripped back specials. You'll still find a digital radio, sat-nav, Bluetooth, and even Apple CarPlay. It's hard to review this car without just, just waxing lyrical 
about the orchestra that's sitting behind me. It's extraordinary. There are some negatives. The steering really is quite light. I would perhaps have liked a little more resistance to the turn, but it still manages to communicate like a heavy rack. The lack of adjustability on throttle maps is a little odd, leaving you at all times with the Cayman in pure furious mode. I don't think I've ever heard a road car scream in such a way as this manages to, or to then still allow you to put in as much throttle as you can. You can enter the corner with throttle on and there's so much grip at the front and it's okay and then you can hammer the throttle and there is so much traction from those big Pilot Sport 2s that it'll just go. Barely, the only time I've broken traction is over a big bump or flooring it. It is just so firmly to the ground. Right, so perhaps I get a little carried away with that extraordinary sound, but I do think it's one of the best I've ever heard. And it never gets boring. Okay, so what does get boring is the very undimmed sound of the engine at any kind of non-wild journey, and the double seat belts are a little bit mm, tiresome. But this is a car for the short, meaningful journeys, not the long, purposeful ones. The big question is, can the 911 GT3 and the Cayman GT4 RS actually live together. Porsche hopes that you'll agree that one of them is definitely for the track and the other mostly for the road. A day with a GT4 suggests they've just about managed to find that differentiation. And it's not scary. That's the other thing. It's incredibly fast. It is incredibly quick through the corners. But unless you're at eight or 9,000 RPM and really, really starting to be very, very stupid. It doesn't fill you with fear. It fills you with confidence. It's like an extension of your body. This is an automotive smile. It's a silly, 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 silly thing. God, I'm glad it's here. Listen to that. <laughs> There's nothing boring about this car. There is nothing boring about this car. Honestly, I can't believe how sensationally good it actually is. Porsche. Bloody hell.